Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. Today we try to answer a few questions we've got in the comments section about a new tool set in the market that uses likely a very different approach to making a wrench than ones you currently own. Tecton's new angle head open end wrenches, these are unique for several reasons. One, it's a double open end wrench, which you don't see a lot new coming out in the 2020s in that format. It's a double angle offset head, 30 and 60 degrees, which very nicely gives you a full range of motion on a hard to access bolt head, as shown here. They're also made in the USA. Always nice to see, especially from a brand such as Tecton, mostly known for their Taiwan tools. But more curiously to us and some of our viewers, this is a laser cut from plate steel 4140 chromoly CNC machined and heat treated wrench, which is not the usual process for ones like these. Well, we have an equal size Tecton wrench from Taiwan that is made via the traditional way, forging. So we're going to stack it up against that to see which slips first, see what these things look like when they catastrophically fail, and hardness testing just to see what's what, then talk about why a brand might make a wrench this way versus another. One thing you're going to notice right away is that this laser cut plate steel USA made wrench looks very plate steel like, very narrow from the sides with pronounced shoulders. Now this should help somewhat with access, but we imagine when it comes down to the old grippy grippy action, that has to be some form of limitation just given its narrow purchase on a fastener. This wrench measures 6.15 millimeters thick on the jaws, whereas the traditional Tecton is 7.65 millimeters as we've seen before. But according to the brand, this laser cutting and machine finishing gives them an edge in creating a precision product. So let's measure the opening and see how much over it is. Looks like 0 0.15, 0 0.14 millimeters over in this case, compared to the Taiwan forged piece with 0.21 millimeter over, that's quite good. But across everything we've tested ever, maybe not top honors. So you might be asking right about now, why does any of this matter, the difference between these wrenches here? Well, this wrench costs about two and a half times Tecton's Taiwan selection per piece, so that's one good reason. And two, theoretically, despite its cool details and words like laser and CNC, this process should, theoretically, result in a weaker, less durable wrench. Well, now both bar and plate, by being in a rolling process, that rolling process is actually, because it's deformation in a solid state, it is a forging process, and it does improve from the original cast structure. But when you take the material and then go through an additional forging process, you're further refining the, the microstructure. You are causing the, the uh, flow of the bar to then uh, follow the contour of the part, and you're producing a part that's going to have um, better fatigue properties and be a tougher, stronger part. If one is machining the part from bar, uh, you've got to realize that in that bar stock, there will be longitudinal grain structure from rolling that bar, uh, or even the plate, through the rolling process. Now, when you go and take that raw material and start to machine away uh, everything you don't need, all that excess material, you're actually going to be cutting through that grain flow. If you start with a forging, you take that bar, you reform that flow, you reform all that microstructure so it follows the contour of the part, so that when you come back and machine, you're not machining through that structure in a way that would potentially weaken the part. But let's see first if it's able to turn something. Tecton specifically points out turning soft metal fittings. So let's see that. This wrench feels pretty solid, but in the hand is noticeably not rounded and sort of just edgy. This one gripped this hex nut up to, as you'll see here, 868 PSI of bolt tension then was not able to progress any further. Well under the Taiwan wrench, as you can see. As usual, we do a handful of tests and redos, but this one yielded the same results, all in the 860s, surprisingly consistent this test setup is. But of course, this is a thin wrench after all. As a function of that torque it delivered and jaw thickness, it earns a 141.1, which in this group spread across a 10 point scale well, for total turning grip, only the Denali Amazon brand saw worse overall, so this gets one point here and four points here, meaning from us, this gets an average of 4.33, matching the Capri tools just below here, which is one of their main Taiwan competitors. But what about from a more technical difference standpoint? 
like hardness here and weld grain structure too. By cutting into these just to introduce a stressor point and to equal out the width cross section between the two different wrenches, we can take a look for ourselves. It's now relatively cold, so as the metal is squashed between the rollers, it's being cold worked. Right, let's see what that's done to the grain structure. The cold rolled piece of metal is the one at the top. Can you see the difference? We seem to have changed the shape of the grains. They've become elongated. Here, the grains are normal. But as the metal is squashed between the rollers, you can see how the grains become elongated and distorted in the direction of rolling. Let's see how tough it is. Remember, toughness is its resistance to shock loading or impact. About 60 units. The broken surface reveals a very coarse grain structure. About 100 units. It's much tougher. This time, the broken surface reveals a much finer grain structure. So with the macro lens on the old TTC camera, here's what the cross section looks like. And I bet without much deliberation, you can guess which wrench this is. Yup, it's the forged one. Here on the left is the laser cut CNC heat treated one. There's a few things of note here. One, the forged wrench's grain structure, just to the naked eye here, is basically uniform. Too small to distinguish like fine powder, which is what you'd sort of hope to find. And then two, the laser cut wrench has larger visually apparent grains, more color variation. And interestingly, we sort of hoped we'd see something like this, also a stacked layered pattern. Imagine biting into a wafer candy bar or a Butterfinger or something. You can see a left to right flow of grains, which is what they were talking about in that old video. A bar or plate as its form does modify the grain structure, but only in one direction sort of like stacking sheets of paper. Here they are in sunlight. Notice the difference in shape of the shearing off too. The forged wrench took material with it, whereas the laser cut broke off cleanly and a plane you'd expect with its sort of grain structure. Imagine for a second trying to karate chop against versus width of a plank of wood. When measuring for hardness, we get a reading average of 49.3 HRC, which is pretty close to, but still below the 52.2 of the forged Taiwan wrench when we measured that. That's not to say that you can't harden plate or billet steel as hard as you can get it forged. That's just what they happen to be here. So why might a brand make a wrench this way? Well, to Tecton's credit, they seemed adamant to make these in the US and well, this ain't the turn of the 20th century anymore. Large forge works in the US are few, far between and booked up all day and night with current contracts. While the upfront cost of making a forged tool is higher, you need separate forged tooling for each and every new wrench size, SAE and metric, that can add up. Laser cutting from plate takes zero upfront cost, doesn't grow in cost based on different sizes offered, and making 100 sets is similar cost and similar commitment to making 10,000 sets. But this ain't no cost savings venture. Laser cutting, then CNC, then heat treat, maybe some final CNC on the tight tolerance end, then removing scale, prepping, chrome plating is not the cheaper route. Forging blanks is faster and cheaper as you scale it up. These wrenches will always take the same amount of processing time per piece, regardless of how many you make. It simply reflects the current manufacturing reality in the US these days, something I've had a lot of experience in the past running up against. Believe it or not, it's pretty tricky to just pick up a phone and get an occasional time slot at a local forging facility using your own tooling setup like you very much can do nowadays in China and historically Taiwan, though options there are getting pretty pared down and backed up now as well. It just doesn't happen in the US anymore. So yeah, we've talked a lot about the differences in these two ways of making a wrench because it's just sort of interesting and a topic we wanted to dive into. But does that make this particular tool bad? I think no way. This tool is designed for and specifically tailored for awkward to access fittings. It's the only reason you'd reach for an odd offset double open end wrench like this to begin with. So we're not talking monstrous amounts of torque here. You'd never really be able to muster it. So in my opinion, Tekton picked the perfect tool to try something like this process on. And I mean, just look at it. It's just a good looking tool, I think. It's very unlikely that you'll run into any scenario where any shortcomings between these two wrench types would materialize in real life, but it does perhaps explain why there aren't a laundry list of small tool houses and guys at home with their bridge port churning out large used everyday sort of hand tools. 
because whether it's pistons and crankshafts or combination wrenches, forging will always be king. Thanks for watching.